two, so the presentation is going to be as polished as I would like it to be. But anyway, I just wanted to share my stories with you and hopefully encourage everyone else to do something as stupid as I did. Online, you can just look at them. There's nothing too special about them in these pictures. So I'll um, begin now. Um, yeah, my talk is basically about um, encouraging other Debian developers to go travelling, and um, hopefully give some tips about the places I've visited, and some stories, and some hopefully some feedback from the rest of you all. So. These are uh, little things of where I've been. So, um, yeah, about three years ago, I travelled from Finland across Russia, the middle of Russia, down through Kazakhstan, across to down to Pakistan, all around India for several months, then to Southeast Asia, then where was I? Then I went to Indonesia. Then I went to Japan, no, then I went yeah, back. Then I went to then I went to Japan. Then I think I went back to Asia and then I went back to Australia. <laughs> and then I travelled around Australia. Then I think I went to the Polynesian Islands. And then I came back to Australia and then I went to Korea. And then after Korea I went to Europe to see my parents because I haven't seen them for several years, sort of thing. And then I went to South America. So, I've seen a bit of the world, and oh yeah, of course I, I'm also, a, I come from South Africa, I'm born in South Africa, so I have a, I have, yeah, a bit of experience, and um, what, made, what made the whole thing a lot easier was, because I guess I was a Debian developer, I know it's going to sound crazy, but anyway, I'll, I'll talk more about that. So, yeah. I started in Finland, and uh, it's a good place to start. I mean, I did some previous traveling, I traveled around Eastern Europe, but I'm not going to talk about that travel. Basically, my travel, the, the really cool travel started in I took a, I took a train there to Russia. So, it's a, it's a really nice place to start your travels, because you can get on the train and uh, throw yourself <coughs> into uh, the big wild world, really. <clears throat> and um, also, gee, I recommend Finland to go traveling. I ha I'm very grateful to Finland. You know, the University of Helsinki gave me an education. <coughs> and... Well, the next thing after Finland, after taking the train into St. Petersburg, in Bon voyage. Check out. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you. <laughs> so, any of you thought about going to Russia? No? <laughs> Come on, you're in your side. Anyway, I, w I went into Russia and it's a really amazing place and it's pretty big and I recommend going there. And it's really it's pretty safe. You can do it a couple of different ways. You can just stay on the train and that's where it's like really no risk. Or you can get off the train like I did every so often. And uh, I did a language course there. And, you know, Russian is quite a geeky language. I think it's worth, worth playing around with it. It's really good. And I enrolled in the St. Petersburg State University, learned Russian. So, yeah, this is where it gets crazy in Russia. And the only problem now is that it's getting expensive because, you know, the oil prices are going ballistic and uh, St. Petersburg was a lot cheaper a few years ago than it is now. And um, yeah, I, the, the visas is something, yeah, Russia is the start of when visas get a bit painful because I love the place but I always have to like leave it all, that, all the time every month or so or something because of the freaking visas. And I would, love to, I would have loved to stay studying there but again, it's because of the visas I had to move on basically. And then, oh yeah, Kazakhstan. 
this picture here was taken in Kazakhstan actually. And uh, yeah, Kazakhstan was probably the last place in the world I would ever thought I would ever be. But it's pretty cool. And and there, I actually, with my Debian skills, got a job, and uh, and I was working for a, a media company. So you know, sometimes if you just go out to these far flung places, you can you can find people and get a job. And this is where it really started. And any questions about Kazakhstan? Do you met Borat? No, I'm no, afraid not. Kazakhstan is not quite like Borat country. It's very rich. There's the Caspian Sea, they got oil, they got gas. And there's yeah, a bunch of smart people there. It's pretty good. And um, you, leave, you, you will lead quite an interesting life, trust me. Go there. If you have any questions, if you want to know some people, maybe I can hook you up. Then, I ended up... You know, one, one, in, in Kazakhstan I was drinking a lot, you know, I was uh, womanizing a lot, I was, I was having a great time actually. But then all of a sudden I was in an Islamic country, Pakistan, I was in Ramadan, I was fasting, I wasn't drinking, and I wasn't looking at women. So it was pretty tough. <laughs> it was pretty tough actually. I, even got, I also got food poisoning, food poisoning on my first week there. So it was really, really hard. But they gave me some drugs and okay, it was okay. So. <laughs> so in Pakistan, I traveled all around there with the help of people that I've met at university, not quite Debian. But as again, you know, use your network. I know someone out there, so you really should go to Pakistan. It is freaking amazing out there. It is wild. And the Islamic, it's, it's the first taste of the Islamic sort of country I've had. Because, um, I don't know about you guys, but I have, didn't have a clue about Muslims and the culture. And, you know, even, I was damn interested, you know, with 9-11 affecting us all as it has. But if you go to Pakistan, you really start to really get hardcore educated, basically, about the different side of the, of the world. And yeah, um, I did actually work in Pakistan. <laughs> I was helping a, a friend of mine arrange a deal with um, uh, Fibok fiber optic cable. Anyway, it was a bit of a stupid thing. I'm not going get, to get into it, but um, you know, people look at you, a foreigner, and they usually think like, hey, this guy's smart, this guy's got a degree, and they usually just ring you into doing something, and it usually can work out pretty well for you. So, hey guys, you're, you're really in a good spot, don't forget that. So, after Pakistan, I was into India. India's a massive place, I spent like six months there. I have a ton of stories about it, but of course, when I was thinking about India, I was thinking Bangalore, you know, the new IT, city, you know, Silicon Valley of the East. Of course, when I got to Bangalore, and I was thinking, oh my God, I'm going to be, I'm going to have a fantastic time with the geeks here. It wasn't quite what I expected. I mean, I don't want to be too dismissive and too general about it, but the way that Bangalore works isn't quite like Silicon Valley. And uh, I wrote a blog about it, so you can just link to it and, and read it, really. But the jobs they do out there aren't very innovative and things like that. So don't quite expect yourself to have a lot of fun out there. It's not, it's not that good. And Bangalore is actually like a new city. It was built in the 60s or the 50s. So it doesn't have a lot of culture. So, I mean, the big thing about going to traveling is just seeing other culture and things like that. And Bangalore is just like a bit of a mess. Um, but you know, I had a good friend out there who worked for um, a, co a company for a year. He did, did, he did feel a bit crazy afterward, but I think it was a cool experience. So after India, yeah, I went to Southeast Asia. And to be honest, I, d I don't think I worked in Southeast Asia. I'm not too sure. No, actually I didn't work. But Southeast Asia is a pretty strange place. It's, um, it's, quite, it's quite hot. <laughs> And uh, the internet isn't too good, except in the big cities. And I don't know what I can say about it. It's more, it's more about holidaying there, I would say, more than working and things like that. And there's plenty, there's plenty to see there. Uh, but from a Debian's perspective, there isn't that much cool stuff happening. Like I expect, you know, a lot of like components get made in Thailand, but you can't really get cool components out on the markets there. It's not like Japan. 
But anyway, Southeast um, Asia is a good place to find uh, English teaching work. I know a lot of you people aren't English native speakers, but you know, you can just lie. They won't know. <laughs> <coughs> Even you, Marco. Thank you. Don't like you. <laughs> and yeah, if you do want IT work, you'll probably end up in Bangkok. And um, yeah, Bangkok, I, I used to hate it, but now I actually kind of like it. It's a really good place. It's like the London of the East in some ways because it's really cheap to travel from Bangkok to different places. That's why, how I like to think of it. I always I ended up going to Bangkok about like 11 times because it's just the best place to get your flights. And the cheapest way to get, and it's just in the middle. So you can just go, well, you can go to Australia cheaply, you can go to uh, Vietnam cheaply, you can go to Japan cheaply, you can go, I don't know, back to India cheaply. So it's really a good place to actually base your operations from. And if you need um, tips to where to stay and things like that, I'd be happy to provide them. So I ended up in Japan. Whoa, ho, ho. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. Because I've been traveling around the East. I've been traveling around Asia. And a lot of people are poor. A lot of people are a bit backward. A lot of people are just like, oh, what are these people like? They're just so... Mm. But when you go to Japan, it, I mean, I arrived there basically, you know, with some Indian garb and like, just like an old t-shirt and some some horrible old pants, and then when you go to Japan, everything's so modern and clean, and everyone's so dressed so smartly. It was quite like a shock to me. And, every, and, and Japan is like, I mean, I thought it was like going to be maybe like, I don't know, Europe or something, or maybe like Italy or something, you know. Not that advanced. <laughs> but it's pretty damn advanced. <laughs> Sorry. Well, Italy's great. Um, and, um, the Japanese people are really hospitable. And I wasn't, I'm not even a De Debian developer, but I said I'd just work at Debian, and they're like, oh my god, a Debian person here in Japan. And they took me out for dinner for like, I don't know how many times, like three or four times. And they gave me a laptop. Like, I came there, so I didn't have a laptop. I said, oh, I'll just take one. So I, have a, I had a laptop, I had food, and I'm not talking just like, you know, taking out from McDonald's or something. I'm talking like the best freaking food you can get. <laughs> Like really expensive stuff. <coughs> like I, I was too scared to look at the bill sort of thing. And actually, the free software um, people in in Japan have this like office there, and you can go in there anytime you want, or they allow me to go there anytime you can go and hack. So it was like really like a dream come true. I had like a laptop. I had this like cool place to go, and the view from there was just freaking amazing. And uh, I really enjoyed it. And at the and. Accommodation is expensive, but my sister was teaching English there, so I was basically staying at my sister's, going there, looking around Tokyo, and in Tokyo it's just it's like geek paradise. You know, Akihabara, you get like, you know, tons of weirdo stuff there. It's just incredible. It's absolutely incredible. So, if if all these places are going to show you, if there's one place you you just have to go to, it's Japan. You'll love it. You'll absolutely love it. And it's, everyone's a bit geeky out there, to be honest. So yeah, after Japan, yeah, I'm just trying to get work in Japan, and there is work. I have a few friends that do work out there, um, mainly for graphic design, I think I mentioned that. Um, but I was supposed to do, I, I, I um, contacted like this sort of recruitment firm, and there were jobs for me, but nothing I really liked, and, and basically, in the end, I thought to myself, hey, I, I, uh, I, Japan's too expensive, and... Anyway, I decided to go to Australia. Long story. So in Australia, I basically arrived with like zero dollars in, in Melbourne. Absolutely nothing. I was like going, um, you know, this is pretty bad. I can't quite even afford to get a, a bus into the city. This is pretty bad. Um, but I, I did have like a team swing. I managed to call uh, my, um, my sister again and say to her, do you know anyone that lives in Melbourne? She says, well, I know someone who knows someone who knows someone. Anyway, I stayed with that knows someone who knows someone <laughs> for the first couple of days. And I was lucky enough to get a job in like my second or third day. I got that through a recruitment company. And um, they pretty much deranged everything. And I was, what, deployment manager. Okay, there's a bit of a story to that. Basically, 
a deployment manager or release manager for a lot of companies in, in the contracting world means that, oh, our project is running late, it's over budget, it's basically screwed up, and we need someone to deliver it. <laughs> so it's not the greatest job to have. So, um, yeah, was, when I arrived in Australia, I was super stressed because A, I didn't have any money, super stressed because um, the, the product that I was supposed to deploy was not very good, to put it mildly. And um, it was for an airline, so it had to work. And uh, yeah, it was definitely a, an education. And um, I was so stressed, right? I tried to join an, a, a gym just to like, you know, keep in shape and stuff. And the gym actually wouldn't allow me to join because my heart rate was too freaking high. I had to go and get a doctor's certificate. So it's pretty mad. But anyway, a lot of people that did help me, and this dev developer out there, Russell Coker, who I'd like to thank a lot. He's a really smart guy. He's really helpful. And he's also a great, um, um, like a lug, you know, Linux users of Victoria. They're a great bunch of guys. They meet every week or two weeks. And um, really nice. So in Australia, it was pretty desperate, but there's, really, there's, there's some nice people out there. And you know, since you're so far away from it, you know everything, they they really, I think they at least they helped me. But the big problem with uh, Australia was that you know I've been in Asia, I've been like, been doing crazy things all the freaking time, um, you know, and getting to Australia it is a bit boring, I must say. But uh, give it a chance. Australia is a really nice place, and I think, I think it's like the best sort of place that I would like to move to perhaps in the future. But it is, it is a bit boring. I'm warning you. Asia is, is uh, really fun. So, well, there's a, I could, uh, there's a long story why I left Australia. But I'll try briefly give it. And these are, these are, visas are your big problem when you're traveling. And basically, I got suckered when I was working in Australia. Because being an immigrant or a foreign worker, you don't, you have a few problems, right? Getting a sponsored visa, for example, not easy, but I got one. But what happens when you get a sponsored visa? You're not allowed to work for another company. You know, the company who sponsored you basically has you for two years. You can't move around. You're basically screwed for two years. And two years, I've done a lot of contracts in my life. Two years in a contract... And you know, no ra no raises, no no future. You don't know where you're going. It's not a great situation. So I got a bit fed up because um, I did I did deliver, deliver the product, and basically I had disagreements with my boss, and you know I left the firm. And since I didn't have a sponsored visa, um, Australia is pretty strict. You have to like leave the country in a few in a few days. You don't have a visa, you, you don't have a right to be there. So I learned pretty hard there. But it was a pretty tough lesson I learned, and um, yeah, I had to leave. I had I had a job offer, so, sort of something going on with Silicon Graphics, but um, it didn't quite work out. So I, I had to leave. It's pretty bad because I had an apartment, I had a girlfriend, I had a freaking life out there. So you really got to pay attention to the sponsored visa, and you got to watch out. So in the future, maybe I, if you really, yeah. Anyway, that's the risk you run. So. What the hell do I do now? I went on like to those French Polynesian islands. From a geek perspective, I wouldn't recommend them. There's no internet out there. It's freaking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> if you like beaches, yeah, they, beaches are really great. But you know, there's only so long you can stay on the beach. And uh, the, the French Polynesian islands are just really, literally, thousands of miles away from civilization. I'm sorry. It's a bit maddening. So. Um, my sister, who was, who was uh, basically teaching in Engli uh, English in Japan, basically moved to Korea. So she said, why don't you come and teach English in Korea? I did that. So I went uh, to Korea, a bit of a broken man, a bit upset, you know, leaving my girlfriend, and leaving my life in Australia, and all that stuff. And, and then I'm in Korea, and Korea isn't quite the same as Japan. It's a bit rough and tumble there. Um, but I taught um, these like, kids for a month. And I always said to my sister, teaching English is so easy, kids, they're no problem, you know. And I, I had like a four hour shift every day. I thought, four hours with kids, it's going to be great fun. <laughs> those, those. <laughs> 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 I tell you, I, uh, even though I had internet connection, like a fabulous internet connection at my sister's place, 
I got home after these kids were I just like was sleeping. They were just destroyed me. I had to like, uh, you know, play with them in the, in the playroom and stuff. Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, it's fun. It is fun. It's an education. And that's one thing I really recommend you guys try. Is that like, I'm not saying like do IT jobs in these foreign countries. There are, there are other options. You know, you can work in a hospital. You can teach kids. And teaching kids was really rewarding. Really rewarding. And I, and I talked, and I, and I blogged a few posts about it, so if you're interested in that, you can have a look at my posts. So I did, I did teach kids for a month, but the great thing I was is that I was looking around what you got to do. I was in a country and I was looking around for like local Unix groups, see who's in a Linux game, and see what's going on. And basically I got in touch with my, my boss, Thomas Park, or my good friend too, and I joined a startup and I spent, well, nine months working for the startup. And it went really, really well. And we got, and I was working out a project like Hunrox, which is like a, an Ubuntu derivative and thing. And yeah, we, got, we did really well. We got bought out by a Japanese company. I ended up working in a cubicle. So it was really quite an experience. Um, but oh, there's a long story to this. I'm not going to go into it unless you really want to hear it. Basically, we got acquired and I wasn't very happy. So I decided to get back on the road. And that took me to, well, yeah, that took me to China. <laughs> well, yeah, China, I did some business in China, and, but that was kind of when I was based in Korea. Anyway, China's cool. China's, you get, Japan is like really advanced, Korea is in the middle of China, and China's just like, they're, they're not, I wouldn't say they're like, it's super advanced, but they're, they're super up and coming. They've got all the latest stuff there. And they're, they're building, uh, Beijing is like, it's just crazy. And the cool thing about China is that it's just super cheap. It's Jesus, you can go there with like no money at all, and you will survive. And there's and there's a really like a, you know like a pumping. There's a bit of a spirit there, you know. Like you, you you go to you move into your European place, and there's like there's no like there's no hmm. But China has got the hmm. And so you just meet you'll meet people, and they'll be saying, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Do you need a job? And I'll be going, oh, yeah, um, actually, I'm pretty busy. I'm working for this other company right now. And it's really lots of opportunities there, so you, you, I, I'm thinking of myself, I should really go back there, to be honest. Um, but um, there, there are some downsides, like the pollution and things like that, it's, it's really quite bad, and the language is a bit bad, and I got kind of like tired of living in this bubble. And you, you live in this bubble in Korea, and you probably live in this bubble in Japan. Basically, you feel a little bit helpless after a while, because you're not really communicating with these people. You, you know, you you basically come to this point where you say like, hey, I'm like, I'm Western, I'm not going to become a Korean, I'm not going to become a Chinese, I'm not going to fully integrate into society. So I uh, thought to myself, yeah, it's good for so long, but you know, you got to. I, I I decided to move on. But uh, I have friends out there. You should check it out. It's amazing. So after the whole Asian thing, I ended up back, ended up basically in South America. And um, there's, a, there's a, a, quite a surprising, I mean, you've seen it out, out here, there's quite a surprising, uh, like, what do you call that, free software movement going on down there. So you're you'll bound to meet some like-minded people sooner or later. And I met a whole bunch of people in, um, in Buenos Aires. And... It was, they were very very helpful and they got me, they just gave me lots of tips. And I really like Argentina, in fact I wanted to work there but the money was just too bad. You know, I was like earning, I don't know, I was like earning uh, well, 80 grand, 80,000 dollars a year in type, type of money in Asia, tax free. I'm not going to talk about my visa. <laughs> but uh, in Argentina, um, the, the, the economy is it's, 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 not, it's coming up, but it's still like pretty low to what I'm used to. And uh, yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, maybe I was a bit snobby because, to be honest, I'd rather be there than here. It's 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 much better. And there's, as you can see, some really like there's hot girls out there. <laughs> and, uh, and it's it's a really good place, South America. It's got a lot to offer. Um, I meant to do some work in Brazil, but it didn't quite work out. But in Brazil, um, there's some big ugly cities like Sao Paulo where everything happens. And I must say, I don't want to cause great offense, Sao Paulo isn't where you want to be. 
Trust me, there's nicer places in the world. Um, so please, guys, um, if you want me to disband anything, if you want to say anything, just, just say something now. And all just email me. And uh, yeah, what I basically did is like, yeah, I want to visit this country. Let's see if there's any Debian developers there. <laughs> and search. And then contact them. Yeah, but there's other ways to contact uh, Linux type people. I mean, yeah, you got to do it. And not only will you, you usually find someone that helps you, and yeah, you can you can usually find work. And yeah, there's traveling, and there's, there's actually just going there and spending some time there, and it's just totally different. And working there, it's totally different. Yeah, and yeah, be wary of the visa, and try to learn a bit of the language. Any questions? Yeah. You travel at the, in a few places in Europe. Yeah, I've traveled all around Europe, but I don't want to talk about Europe. Europe. In not in Europe? Ah, you. You don't talk no. about Europe. But everyone knows Europe. Europe is easy. Europe is easy. You, know, you don't have to worry about going across borders. There's no fear in Europe, I think. But I've traveled all around, I've traveled all around Europe except maybe um, the south east. Which I'm going to do. I mean, I'm, this is a Hungarian guy, I think, or Bulgarian guy. I've already made contact, so I'm going to go out there. So that's what you should do. You see some guy from a strange country, just don't go like, "Oh my God, he's weird." <laughs> Say like, "Hey, I've never been to your country. Can I come visit?" That's the kind of attitude you've got to have. So, any other questions? Yeah, sure. What are you doing now? Are you still traveling? Are you working? Better? Well, I'm. What I'm doing now is pretty depressing. I'm just living in London. Paying high rent. I mean, it, it, you can earn high amounts of money, but everything's so expensive in London. Yeah, I'm living in London. I'm not enjoying it. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm thinking of moving to Italy or back to China. <laughs> Just anywhere except London. I, I don't know what I'm doing really. Like in Korea, um, I was saving. I was saving so much money. I was hardly not spending any money at all. I had this wonderful apartment, I had this wonderful kitchen. I wasn't even using the kitchen because I was going out every night for, for, for breakfast, lunch and dinner actually. In London, if you want to go for breakfast, lunch and dinner, you're mad. You're absolutely mad. You'll be either eating crap food or you'll be eating too expensive food. So yeah, I'm, I'm in a bit of a life crisis here. Help me out guys. Give me some, give me some tips. <laughs> so yeah, any other questions? Have I encouraged you to travel, or have I put you off? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone want to go to China? <laughs> Me, I want to go to Tokyo. Tokyo? Yes. Yeah. Japan sounds good. Excellent. Daniel? Check, check China at some point. Yeah, it's cheap. It's cheap. I love it. And the food is fantastic. The food is fantastic. And it's really like, it's, it's pumping. Any places you want to go? Where are you from, by the way? Croatia. Hey, I want to go to Croatia. You do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you'll know how to get around if you know some Russian. No. Yeah. It's similar, but no. <laughs> but it's nicer. No, no such, uh, you know, uh, mafia stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, the mafia stuff can work out for you because in Kazakhstan, I was, I was working. Uh, my, my basically, my friends were saying you're under the roof. I'll be going, okay. <laughs> you are ours. Huh? You're ours. Yeah, so there was a bit of relief after leaving Kazakhstan. But, <laughs> but to be honest, it was really good. I really liked it. I had like my own driver, my own bodyguard. Uh, <laughs> and like uh, my, my friend Misha was just saying like, like stuff like, do you know about internet cafes? I said, well, yeah, I've been to one. We need an internet cafe in Almaty, okay? I'll try, I'll try to help you with that. And then he'll be going, do you know anything about nightclubs? Yeah, I've been to a nightclub, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I said, like, you have nightclubs, yeah, but we don't have Western nightclubs. We're going, yeah, you don't have Western nightclubs. So he asked me to design a Western nightclub. You're like, me designing a nightclub? Christ <laughs> almighty. Uh, so this, yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, but Croatia, uh, tell me about Croatia. Why should I be going there, huh? Uh, nice uh, coastline. Quiet, secure country. Internet? Uh, well, well, it's all right. Uh, we're in Europe, so okay. internet is just fine. 
And the rents? Uh, low. I think by your standards, low. Even in the, the capital? Which is the capital? Zagreb. Zagreb. Do you think I might be able to get work? Uh, yeah, probably. Probably, probably. Maybe I should head out there. Yeah. When you go to Hungary, just cross the border. Yeah. Yeah. Croatia. And it's... <laughs> <laughs> and it's across the sea from Italy, so... Two hours by car from where I live. Hey Mark, I can, yeah. come, I can come to your place for yeah. food. <laughs> oh, also, the food from Croatia is very good. Oh really? Yes. Oh, that sounds really good. Oh my god, uh, it's like the National Tourist Board hired us. <laughs> Croatia. Yeah, I think you should nice try Brazil, perhaps, but not São Paulo. Yeah. Uh, perhaps Bahia, Salvador, Del Horizonte. Okay. I suggest that. I suggest that. Uh, Belo Horizonte is especially cheap in, in terms of rent and, and food. Internet? Internet's very good. You go point that out to, to me on the map. Brazil is pretty good. Yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Also. Rio de Janeiro is freaking amazing. So I'm not, I don't mean to badmouth Brazil. It's just that the, the work opportunity didn't work out there. But it's pretty good there. Really good. I don't, I don't really like Rio, Rio de Janeiro either. Okay. Well, I like it. You see these uh, things on the beach, they're pretty good. Uh, <laughs> oh, Bahia is better. Bahia is better. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, five minutes. Jesus. <laughs> and I, I, I mean, a lot of you probably, I don't know how much traveling have you guys done, but, you know, when I was living in, when I was born and raised in South Africa, I never thought in the wildest dreams I'd be in places like Moscow. Never mind Kazakhstan. I think Kazakhstan's like, what am I doing here? Hey, why don't you tell us about South Africa? Oh, South Africa, wow. Well, it's probably boring for you, but... It is boring course. for me, but what do you want to know about South Africa? Well, the same stuff you said about all other countries. Well, South is Africa there... is a... I, to be honest, I'm no expert anymore because I left there when I was like 17 or something like that. So, but South Africa isn't um, something I like to talk about because, you know, um, We've been, been going through some really big changes in, in the last 15 years. And South Africa, for at least for my sort of white, white middle class family, was, uh, you know, quite, you know, secure and peaceful and we, and we were having a good business. So we were like happy as, as can be. But in 15, uh, about 15 years ago, uh, you know, the country changed a lot. And yeah, for the better, um, but uh, not for the better of our particular family. So we had to move. But... I hear good things about uh, South Africa all the same. There's lots of opportunities there. Um, we don't have oil, but we have pretty much other, any other natural resources. So, um, yeah, in a sad, I think the sad thing is that the, the rich and poor has is, is, is got a lot bigger. And, yeah, there's lots of opportunities. I don't know how, I don't think you should worry too much about the visas, because you always meet weirdo people there. French people, Italians, Russians, <laughs> they're all there. And um, Cape Town is unfortunately really expensive because every criminal and his dog has got a place there. <laughs> but and where I'm from, Durban is yeah. It's, mm, I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> um, if yeah, you got to you got to you got to go out there. Go to Japan. Hey, when have you thought about going to Japan? Have you been out there to Asia yet? No. Oh. Okay. I think we should end it here now. I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, Croatia, I'm serious. Hope you're not too worried about me. <laughs> no, no. Can you take some of my stuff there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. Let us know.